Let's have a bit more fun with our Schmidt trigger gate. We're now going to do something a bit further on from just varying a resistor on the input. We are now going to go over here, take off the resistor, and instead just have a wire which can just go to plus 5 or ground. And we can also let go of the wire. We're going to make a small memory. And we're going to use a small component here, which is called a capacitor. Here you are, one shown here. It's got a black bar on one side with some minus signs, and that's to show you which lead is negative. The other lead is longer and it's positive. We need to connect to the right way around. And on the symbol, the box is positive and the line is a minus sign, it's a negative at the bottom there. So what we're going to do is just pop the capacitor in to the input that we've just disconnected from the variable resistor. And now what I'm going to do is connect our wire back, but it's not going to go anywhere. It's just floating in the air there. Now let's just see what happens. We'll turn on and our LED is on. So we have a logic high which means then that the input must be low because you've got a high already is going to plus 5. The other input is low and there it is. I can touch it. It doesn't do anything. Now if we just touch this onto one of the plus 5 op pins, see what happens. Boop, the LED turns off. Now I can let go and it stays off. It's like it's remembered. How can we get the LED to turn back on again? Well, let's just quickly touch it onto the ground. Ah, now it turns off, on again. So what's happening is that it remembers a high, it remembers a low. It's a very simple memory. And this sort of thing is what's inside our thumb drives that we have. It can just be remembering a 1 or a 0. So if you have a 1 gigabyte thumb drive, you've probably got something like 8,000 million of these gates inside. So it can remember a 1 or a 0. There you go. Nice and simple. Let's see what else we can do.